trapped in the middle of the deadly shootout. Nine dead, 18 injured. The FBI now called in. Rival bikers in a bloody battle at a busy restaurant and tonight video during the chaos. The emergency landing late today, 300 passengers, mechanical trouble at the other flight. The computer expert who says he got control of the cockpit through the in-flight entertainment system. The fiery crash, the Marine killed. There were already serious concerns about that aircraft. The Cuban boy made famous in that tug of war, federal marshals storming in. Tonight here, you will meet Elian Gonzalez at 21. His new message now for those marshals. And the mystery fire not far from the vice president's home tonight, the voicemails. The family calling from inside. You will hear those calls. The FBI wants your help. From ABC News World Headquarters, this is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Monday night, and we begin with fast-moving developments out of Texas. Stunning new details from that deadly shootout in Waco and dramatic images now of the aftermath. Customers trapped inside as rival motorcycle gangs in a bloody brawl outside a bustling restaurant. Nine dead, 18 injured, more than 150 charged tonight. The FBI now on the case this evening. And tonight, those innocent bystanders inside, some hiding in a freezer until it was safe to come out. ABC's Philip Mena on the ground in Texas for us tonight. Oh, someone's been chatting. Tonight, this dramatic video, innocent bystanders watching a biker brawl unfold. In my nearly 35 years of law enforcement experience, this is the most violent and most gruesome scene that I have dealt with. Sunday morning, hundreds of bikers from five gangs, including the notorious Bandidos, Cemetars, and Cossacks, descend on Waco, heading to this busy shopping plaza and the Twin Peaks restaurant, which advertises bike nights. Posting on Facebook, ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. 11 a.m., Twin Peaks opens for business. About an hour later in the restroom, a fight breaks out. The brawl spilling into the parking lot. The bikers using brass knuckles, knives, chains, clubs, and guns. I just got a call from passerby. They were going by Twin Peaks, thought they heard a gunshot, looked over and saw a lot of people running. People hiding in nearby restaurants watch as 22 officers rush into action. It was really, really scary. They said people outside the doors had guns. <laughs> I crawled back towards the uh, freezers with a lot of the waitresses. Parents carrying their children to safety. Police and bikers exchanging gunfire. Nine gang members killed, another 18 injured, 170 arrested. Cops lining them up on the curb and loading them into buses and squad cars. The FBI has called outlaw biker groups a serious national domestic threat. And tonight, Waco police tell ABC News they're still on guard. Are you worried at all about possible retaliation? Certainly something that we are aware of. David, tactical units and investigators still out here tonight collecting evidence. As for the restaurant, police say they were warned not to host this gathering. And tonight, this location is now shut down for good. David. Philip Benna on the scene in Texas for us. Philip, thank you. Now to that other developing story tonight, that deadly crash in Hawaii. A Marine aircraft, an Osprey, on a routine training mission, and then that hard landing. A fireball erupting, one Marine killed. An aircraft that flies like a plane and lands like a helicopter, but there have been serious questions about this aircraft before. Some had even nicknamed it the Widowmaker. Here's ABC's Clayton Sandell. It was supposed to be a routine training flight, but as this Marine MV-22 Osprey kicks up a dust cloud yesterday in Hawaii, it suddenly makes a hard landing, erupting in flames. Dude, look how black that smoke is now. 22 Marines based at Camp Pendleton in California were on board. One was killed. 21 were taken to hospitals. One is still in critical condition. It's tragic and our condolences go to the families and uh, to the loved ones of the victim. The Osprey is an aviation hybrid, part helicopter for takeoff and landing, transforming into an airplane for high-speed cruising. It's a complicated machine with a troubled history. During early test flights, a series of Osprey crashes killed 30 people, earning it a nickname, the Widowmaker. The Osprey is not as good as most helicopters could conduct a mission, and it's not as good as most airplanes would be able to conduct a mission. Today, the Marines told us the modern Osprey is reliable and safe and has proven itself remarkably in combat since 2007. For now, the military says there will be no change to Osprey flights while they investigate why this one went down. Clayton Sandell, ABC News, Denver. 
Clayton, thank you. There are major new developments tonight in that tragedy on the tracks. The Amtrak train jumping the rails, speeding up as it approached that curve. We take you back to the map tonight, that northeast corridor route from Boston to Washington, D.C., traveled by 11.6 million passengers every year. It is back up and running this evening. And tonight, what the FBI is now saying about that dent in the train's windshield, they appear to be ruling out the idea that something was fired at the train, which now leaves two main theories. And here tonight, ABC's David Curley. Less than seven days after the deadly derailment, Amtrak trains roll through Philadelphia. Commuters back in cars. So you're back on the train? I am. Any concerns? No, not at all. Even though Amtrak has restored service as we now ride through that curb where the derailment happened, investigators are still asking, why was that train traveling so fast that jumped the rails here? Tonight, new developments. The FBI today inspected the engine with that partially shattered windshield and says it was not hit by a bullet. The NTSB will determine if something else hit the train, but there are no radio recordings supporting the story that Amtrak 188 was struck by something. We do know that the train was traveling at more than 100 miles an hour and the brakes were engaged as it reached a 50 mile an hour corner resulting in the derailment. But what caused that increased speed? Investigators are looking at the possibility of a mechanical failure or a manual increase of the throttle before that slow corner, possible human error an ongoing investigation as trains now return to service. David Curley, ABC News, Philadelphia. David, thank you. And a white-knuckle moment at LAX, a Hawaiian Airlines flight from L.A. to Honolulu, forced to make an emergency landing, turning back after reporting mechanical issues, concerns about a fuel leak, 290 people on board. The pilots dumping fuel so they could land safely, firefighters on the runway as it touched down. The third emergency landing by a Hawaiian Airlines jet in just one month. The investigation into what happened late today still ongoing tonight. We turn now to that stunning allegation from a respected computer expert. He claims he seized control of a passenger jet in midair from his passenger seat, hacking the in-flight entertainment system, he says, controlling the cockpit for a moment. Raising serious questions, is that even possible? Now the FBI is on the case tonight, and here's ABC's Morris Gavocampo. Tonight, a potential new threat to air travel. Chris Roberts, chief researcher for a cybersecurity firm, telling the FBI in newly released documents he was able to temporarily take control of a flight while on board, claiming he got in through the in-flight entertainment system and overwrote code, causing the plane to move sideways. Roberts also claiming he infiltrated in-flight entertainment systems approximately 15 to 20 times, Federal officials tell ABC News his claims are extremely unlikely, but the FBI has seized Robert's computers and is investigating. Anything that has to do with software, anything that has to do with electronics is hackable. Including ships, trains, even cars. <laughs> A security researcher using his laptop to override the driver. <laughs> Roberts has not been charged and in a statement says, my only interest has been to improve aircraft security. Mara Esquivel-Campo, ABC News, New York. Mara, thank you. Now to the deadly weather. More than 200 reports of severe weather over the weekend. 41 reported tornadoes, including this one right here. This is from Elmer, Oklahoma, what's called a multiple vortex tornado, now declared an EF2. And tonight, flash flood watches across the plains. These images out of Texas, Black Hawk helicopters airlifting families to safety. Tonight, more drenching rain on the way. Meteorologist Ginger Z is standing by with the track. But first, the stunning new images coming in right now. Deadly flash flooding across the deep south. In Ruston, Louisiana, floodwaters sweeping away a vehicle, killing a young boy. Four to seven inches of rain sending land sliding in Mississippi, immobilizing this school bus full of children. I knew something was up when the bus was driving. I heard a it like slumped over and then the wheels got stuck and everybody was panicking. Instead of a steady stream of traffic, a steady stream. All this dangerous water after a weekend of severe storms. Almost 300 severe storm reports, including this violent tornado in Oklahoma. And in Texas, rescuers utilizing a drone to get a line to that stranded family. The National Guard pulling them out. 
that drone did the trick. Mm. They got to that family. Ginger with us tonight with the track for these next 24 hours. So many colors showing up on the map tonight. We have to get straight to it, David. Winter weather advisories and warnings 10 to 20 inches in parts of the Rockies exploded, expected. That's snow, by the way. And then we talk about rain from Wichita, Kansas to Wichita Falls, Texas. Severe thunderstorm watch tonight, including the potential for hail in West Texas. But it's really the rain that we've seen do all the damage, has killed people, and has the potential to, in the coming days, almost a half foot possible, especially in central and northern Texas, parts of Oklahoma City, on track to see their wettest month yet, ever on record. And then here's this. Waking up tomorrow, it's been snowing in the northern plains, and it'll feel like winter. A real dividing line, the cold and the warm. Ginger, thank you. We turn overseas tonight into Iraq, and new images coming in at this